Hello and thanks for joining us on The Pet Stop. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Voynick from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Well, ahead on this week's show, we'll do a little show and tell with the travel editor of The Record, who's just back from a trip to Africa to help return big cats to the wild. We'll also have our Pet of the Week, as well as a visit from Diane Petrozelli of the Monmouth County SPCA for our weekly adoption segment. But first, uh, there's danger working, lurking everywhere for our pets in the form of plants from indoor plants to ones in the garden and even in nature, a pet owner should be able to spot the ones that can be harmful. Well, here to tell us how to avoid these run-ins is Dr. Deborah Breitstein, registered veterinarian and co-director of the Animal Health Care of Marlboro. Welcome back to the show. Nice to be back, Brian. Good All to right. see you. Good to see you. So uh, there are some plants out there that, uh, that people ordinarily might not think would be, you know, uh, an area of suspicion, but we're finding out more and more year after year that there are some uh, problems that come up with dogs and cats and livestock with yes. these. Uh... There's an enormous number of plants and problems out in nature and to go through all of them would take just way too long. Uh, there are some common plants, some common uh, divisions in areas that we think about that are concerning. But whenever a, a pet parent considers that their animal may have eaten, ingested, or find remnants of such in the output area, We'd like to get a sample of that so we can identify as best we can and treat symptomatically, supportively. That's what most of these problems really respond to. Okay, good. Well, let's start with household plants. You know, uh, to top it off, uh, you know, we, we just uh, had a bunch of, you know, lilies blooming uh, out there. And, and we've found out not, not over probably 10 years ago that it's toxic to cats when, the, uh, when they ingest those flowers for uh, reasons of kidney failure. And cats do like to munch on greenery in the household, and some of these are yeah. more attractive than others. We brought some pictures along dumb cane. That, that can cause a problem, uh, hence the name dumb cane, swelling in the uh, back of the throat area, and you can't speak. It's oxalic acid in the leaves, shoots dirt, and cats use the dirt for litter box usage, too. Very irritating, and Absolutely. the philodendron as well, huh? Along in the same family, and many of these are related and have some of the similar signs. So we try and, as I say, look to what is the problem. There's no specific antidote for any of these. So the antidote is really supportive care. Right, right, flush out the mouth. You know, so, so if you come home from work and your philodendron uh, has been, or dumb cane has been, has, has been munched on and your dog can't speak, you'll know exactly what's going on. Absolutely, they'll speak in a different way. And they'll salivate a, a lot, won't they? Quite a bit, it's irritating, it burns, it's a problem sensation yeah. as well as a problem in, in, in the uh, ingestion of the Well, here's plant. a fairly common house plant, the larkspur pretty plant. It's pretty and it's grown in the garden in the and garden, it's yeah. beautiful but it has again some of the same properties as digitalis, a heart medication sure. and that can actually slow or stop the heart, speed up the heart, stop the heart so it can be a very big problem for those that eat it. Yeah there you go, the fox glove, fox that, glove. the actual origin of digitalis for heart uh, patients so exactly. uh, that can actually cause some really nasty uh, side effects. Many of these plants do originate in nature, even aspirin for instance is from the bark of a tree That's so right, the willow, there yeah. are some things that we find out in small quantities are not a toxin or poison but actually have medicinal mm. purposes. Anything in moderation, right? Vegetable garden plants uh, we'll talk about. Well rhubarb is uh, one of the situations, the leaves are a problem, they're very pretty but again, they can be munched on and it can cause a problem. Uh, just like also uh, vegetables on the vine, rotting vegetables, compost, mulch, many of these things can be a problem for our animals as well. Not just the plants, but what they grow in, the milieu that they grow. Particularly, you mentioned mulch. The, uh, you know, the cocoa mulch is a severe hazard. Is that hazard. still a problem, do you know? Because I think once it became apparent, the stores that were selling that did take that away, because that's from the cocoa plant. So chocolate, right. chocolate intoxication can actually cause neurologic problems. Uh, problems affecting the heart, the kidneys, the liver. So it can be a very yeah. concerning exposure. Yeah, from Hershey's, Pennsylvania. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll talk about the other group that, uh, that you brought along, the ornamentals. The Japanese yew is a very common uh, shrub outside. And surprisingly, the berries aren't as toxic as the leaves, but still, any exposure can be an issue. And of course, you know, we, want, we know that we grow these quite often in the garden as uh, ornamentals, and any time you see that there's been uh, an ingestion potential, or we s suspect signs, as I did today with an animal that mm -hmm. presented to me, right. we'll try and evaluate what that might be. Horse and chestnut are a problem for livestock, but the previous uh, beautiful uh, flowering uh, shrub was the mountain laurel, and the mountain laurel and the rhododendron in the same family can cause some, some severe vomiting and stomach Digestive upsets upset, as well. And it, so many of these things have the same problem presentations and mm -hmm. it can be very tricky to find out what the exposure risk is 
And uh, if we know, great, we may u sometimes use help with some of the um, poison control uh, Absolutely. resources that we have. The yeah. ASPCA has a phone number to call. Or sometimes I'll, I'll ask uh, some of my local garden shops or the internet. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of the black locust that you, uh, you brought along as, as well. And uh, along with the other poisonous uh, wild plants, uh, cherry twigs, you know, if they're Cherry's very on. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cherry uh, is uh, an ornamental tree, but if you crack the branch and smell sweet almond smell, that's actually indicative of cyanide. Cyanide is odorless. It may be tasteless, hence it's a good poison if you have that as your uh, need to know. But it's the, the smell of the sweet almond that really clues you into the high concentration of cyanide. And that can be a problem, especially even for some of our small kids, like uh, rabbits, guinea pigs, you want to give them something to chew on. Mm -hmm. You don't want to pick that. All right. You mentioned the ASPCA, and, and we really should have viewers go to that website, the ASPCA uh, it's website. It's a great for resource. Poisoners. And also their phone number is a terrific one to have. It's right on the screen, one uh, 888 annie help And... Um, they, they do charge a fee, but it's a case number assigned, and your veterinarian or multiple veterinarians can use that, uh, you know, for future calls uh, relative to the same case. Right. Saved a lot of saved a lot of lives. We use it quite a bit. It, the, it's nice to know that that exists. It's Thanks, Dr. Deb. It. Great to have you on. We're just out of time, but still to come, the record's travel editor heads to Africa for an animal rescue. We'll hear all about that, plus adoptions and Pet of the Week, too. So stick around. There's more to come on the Pet Stop only on News 12 New Jersey. Well, welcome back to the Pet Stuff. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich. You know, a while back, we had on the record's travel editor, Jill Schensel, who spoke about her cross-country trip to deliver some special needs animals. Readers were then asked to choose Jill's next volunteer adventure, and they picked the southern African nation of Namibia, where Jill helped return big cats to the wild. Jill's now here to tell us all about the trip and share some images. Welcome back to the show, Thanks. Jill. Thanks. It's good to be here. Boy, to Africa, huh? That must have been some adventure. Yeah. What the were your options? Oh, well, um, the, our readers chose a volunteer vacation. They're really popular right now. And uh -huh. I wanted to do something.